very much uh, for the introduction. Um, so I graduated from my bachelor's at Exeter in 2014. Uh, I did history and international relations. Uh, I then stayed on to do a master's and that was in applied security strategy, uh, which was lots more of sort of international relations and counter-terrorism and all that sort of stuff. Um, from there I went straight into the civil service into working for government. Uh, I worked for the foreign office briefly on their Libya desk um, and then went into the cabinet office to work in a more commercial role. And then finally ended up in the Department of Health, uh, where I was working on junior doctor strikes, and pandemic flu, and lots of very exciting sounding policy areas. Um, and this was kind of, I then was kind of a couple of years post-graduation and was sort of living what was meant to be the dream after you graduated. My parents were very proud of me and I was sort of ticking all those boxes that I was meant to have ticked in life. Um, but I then found that actually I wasn't very happy at all. Uh, it wasn't what I was expected. I didn't feel like I was making a difference in any capacity and that was the reason why I joined the civil service to begin with. Uh, and I started to feel quite disillusioned with what I was doing and quite, quite unhappy. But also I didn't really know what I would do instead. Um, and I found particularly as a young person, you're, and perhaps as you get older, your, your career is your identity. It's part of who you are. When you meet somebody, you introduce yourself, you tell them your name, you tell them what you do. And it very much becomes ingrained as part of that. So I found it really, really difficult to take a step back and think, what am I going to do instead? I've got to entirely reinvent myself. Um, and yeah, I found it so difficult that I decided to try out absolutely everything that I'd ever wanted to do. So age six, I wanted to be an archaeologist, and I decided to put that on my list. And age 10, I wanted to be a writer, and I put that... So literally, I went all the way up, all the things I'd ever imagined doing, but never had the opportunity to do, or never thought was a real job, or I could ever make any money out of it. I decided to actually go go and try. And I ended up with a list of 25 um, and I just turned 24 so I quit my job and I set myself the goal of trying them all before my 25th birthday. Um, the goal was obviously partly to figure out what I wanted to do uh, but it was wider than that as well. I wanted to promote more diverse ed careers education for young people because I feel that it is very um, structured towards certain professions and it doesn't perhaps give you the, the diversity and the ability to reflect on things that you might want. Um, so partly that, uh, partly to promote portfolio careers, which is obviously why I'm here as well, uh, but also to talk about career fulfilment and to sort of bring up the conversation of what makes me happy and to sort of bring that up a bit more because I, I think that's something that does get lost a bit along the way of professionalism. Um, so I spent a year doing that and that's a kind of whole separate conversation. Um, I finished doing that in uh, August last year, August 2017, and completed it all. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm here to talk about what I do now. Um, so I currently have six slash seven jobs um, that are all very, very here and there and part-time and all of that sort of thing. Um, so uh, I'm writing a book, uh, which is one of them. Uh, I still maintain my website, blog and social media channels, which is the second one. Um, I do a lot of public speaking at schools and universities, which is why I'm here now. Um, I'm the career section editor of a national student newspaper and it's sort of got three editions and I write a few articles for each one so again that's very piecemeal, that's kind of a few days here and there. Um, I'm also a communications advisor for an international um, development organisation which is again a few days here and there. Um, and then the last one, uh, one of the last ones is I um, I'm a social media content writer for Carluccio's, which is <laughs> really random, but I get to write about Italian food in Italy all day long, and it's really fun. <laughs> it's super random, but quite good. Um, and then I also do a bit of freelance travel writing, uh, which well, yeah, kind of came out of the 25 jobs as well. Um, so I kind of go around the world sometimes and write about it, which is pretty good, um, to be honest. So uh, in terms of why I decided to pursue a portfolio career, um, the 25 jobs kind of showed me that I don't just want to choose one, and I don't see why I should necessarily have to choose one if that's not what I want to do. In most of the jobs I do, I use the same skill set, but just in very different ways, and it enables me to be far more diverse uh, and more resilient, I think, as well, in terms of my career. So I'm sort of, I'm hedging my bets a little bit, um, I'm sort of, so writing for me is what, the skill that I ended up thinking, actually, this is what I want to do and I want to pursue, but instead of saying, I'm going to be a reporter and kind of go down that for example, I'm, I now, I'm writing books and I'm writing blogs and I'm writing articles and doing all different sorts of things and applying it in, in those ways. Um, I like the autonomy of being in control and doing exactly what I want to do when I want to do it. Um, I, found it very, I, I find it very difficult to go back to sort of the 9 to 5 permanent job routine after having the sort of flexibility uh, and independence that I gained afterwards and I love that now I, kind of, I decide my agenda. 
um, quite freely. Um, I've also found that um, I really enjoy the short-term project nature so and the variety of it. I, I'm never ever bored and I get to very much design my own career. I, I get to decide if that's what I want to do, that's the route that I can go down and I'm, I'm the one in control. So rather than saying this is the job spec and liking 70% of it, I make sure that I like 100% of what I'm doing and because the projects are short, if I'm not liking it, it ends in two months and that's fine and then I can find something else that I do like. Um, in terms of how it's helped my career, um, I think first and foremost it's made me happy. It's made me really, really, really happy. I, I don't get Sunday night blues. I get up every single morning and think, I get to go and do that today. And I'm really excited to do it. And that wasn't the case this time two years ago. Um, I've been yeah, able to set my own agenda and carve out my own niche in the areas that I want to. I'm the one that's in control. Um, because I'm contracting and effectively doing consultancy work, I get paid consultancy level fees, which is quite nice uh, and helps balance out some of the like, more difficult tax issues of organising yourself. Um, it's enabled me to achieve my dream, which for me is writing a book, um, and it's enabled me to do it at a life stage that I never ever thought I would be able to, and it's given me the flexibility to work in time to write outside of everything else that I'm doing. Um, it's also, yeah, it's made me more future facing and sort of the things that I do are still going to be jobs in 2040 or 2050, and I worry that a lot of the job, the work that I've been doing beforehand might not be, and it might not be as relevant, and I'm kind of tr trying to make sure that in 20, 30, 40 years' time, I'm still going to be employable and I'm still going to have a job. Um, in terms of the skills that I've gained and the lessons that I've learned, um, I've learned to learn quickly, very, very quickly, and sort of you have piloted in, and you have to figure out what you're doing immediately. Um, there's no time, sort of three or four months, to get to grips with the job. You have to figure it out, and you have to figure it out fast. Um, for me, I really like that. I really like um, the challenge and the intellectual challenge that that gives, um, and the people skills that you have to have. You have to make relationships and build relationships really, really quickly. Um, but that's for me. That was a positive. That was something I really enjoyed doing. Um, you have to constantly sell yourself. Um, so you're constantly applying for jobs and that sort of thing. You're constantly interviewing, but it becomes a lot easier very quickly. And because they're short-term jobs, the interviews aren't quite as you know, long, they're not quite as stressful, they're, they're much more kind of like a 15 minute chat and then, yep, you're hired, done. And it's, it's, much, it's a much quicker and easier process. Um, and it also gives you a chance to reinvent yourself and you, you decide how you're going to sell yourself. Um, if you're going for a certain type of job, I pick on this bit of experience and this bit of experience and that's the, the me that I'm going to show them. Um, and I quite enjoy that side of it. Um, other things I've had to learn, I've had to learn how to create a personal brand. Uh, I've had to build a website, build social media channels in a more professional way. Uh, how to use the press to my advantage and those are all things which are totally new to me I was never taught and just sort of have to figure it out as you go along um, but it is something that is increasingly important I think if you want this sort of career but I think it's also something that you can now learn there are books and guides and webinars and all those sorts of things that you can attend that will help you to kind of figure that out a little bit more um, one of the best things is that it means I can work anywhere in the world uh, I'm entirely location independent apart from when I'm doing speaking events um, so I've just come back from a month in Bali, um, where I literally was working in a swimming pool with a coconut, and that, that was where I was working. So I was working with sort of digital nomads um, that were working in a co-working, co-living space. So everybody was an entrepreneur or a creative or a writer, and they didn't have to be in a specific place or work at a specific time to do what they were doing. And they literally go from Mexico to Bali to India or wherever it is they want. They are earning sort of in pounds or dollars, but are spending rupees. So they're saving a huge, huge amount of their incomes um, and get to live a lifestyle that you can never afford to as a young person living in London. So I'm really enjoying that side of it and that's given me a huge amount of freedom to see the world and travel whilst still working uh, and earning a living. Um, one thing is you need to be very good at time management. Um, that's a big one, that's a big yeah, learning curve. Um, I'm constantly juggling and balancing things out. And I think that's probably the only downside to it is thinking about work-life balance and that's something that I'm still kind of working through and trying to figure out. And I do usually work sort of nine to six, but sometimes things bleed over into the weekend. And that is what it is. That's a small price, for me at least, that's a small price to pay, particularly at my current sort of life stage. Like, I'm happy to do that because I know that, that the work needs to get done. It needs to get done. I need to do it whenever I need to do it. Um, but that also means that last week, or a couple of weeks ago even, I took my weekend on a Wednesday and a Thursday, and then I worked the weekend because I knew that I could do that and I had the flexibility to do that. Um, and then, in terms of the advice that I'd have to anybody that's interested in this sort of lifestyle, um, there's plenty of different ways you can do it. There's no set path to follow. Because you're the one in control, that means you're in control of how you do it. So 
So that could be through part-time jobs, through freelancing, through contracts, or through setting up your own business. And it can be through any different combination of those. So it can be through two different part-time jobs, or it can be through doing all of those four or five options all at the same time. And you're the one that's in control of that. Um, I'd say think about why you're thinking of making a change and try and identify what's wrong with what you're doing now and then make sure that you don't fall into the same trap again. So for me, working environment was one thing that was really uh, important that I didn't want to end up doing again because I, I personally wasn't very comfortable with the office nine to five commute sort of thing. And then it'd be very easy to fall back into that and kind of not identify that as being the part of the problem. Um, so that's one thing that I yeah, would say look out for. Um, be creative about where you look for job opportunities. Um, I get a lot of work through social media, through Facebook groups. Uh, there's a lot. Uh, there's a particularly good one called uh, Creative Networking. It's a Facebook group with a few thousand members, and they're constantly posting jobs. And I got two jobs, I think, through that, um, and it's great. And there's so many. Again, like, you need to just have a search on um, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. For there's there's a few hashtags that people use, and you just have like a, a alert set up for those hashtags. You go through it, and you'll get a whole list of opportunities that aren't listed on career websites or recruitment websites. And you just speak directly to your employer and within a week you can have a job. It's that simple and that easy. Um, I'd say use it as an opportunity to test out different careers or skills that you've always wondered about but you've never been able to. So you don't have to say, I'm going to quit my job and that's it, I'm starting a blank sheet of paper. You can say, I'm just going to stop working Friday afternoons. I'm just going to take those three or four hours to set up my jewellery design business or whatever it is. You make small steps if it's too much to sort of completely quit and start again. You can sort of scale things up uh, as you get confidence as you get more experience you can change things up it doesn't necessarily have to be all in or all out um, and yeah and I think it takes time to build up it's not necessarily going to instantly happen overnight I didn't sort of finish the 25 and then instantly have a full-time career of portfolio careers uh, it sort of did take three or four months to build up to it which is why I'd say sort of go slow test things out test the water 